One of Kurt Vonnegut's tips for writing was to give your readers as much information as possible, as soon as possible. To hell with suspense, he said. I think it's one of the best tips in writing I've ever read. Too many writers seem to think that their role is to set the reader a riddle or to withhold the facts. I read a lot of unpublished writing. And often if I complain to an author that I don't know whether the characters are holding their conversation in a living room in Basildon or on the north face of the Eiger, the author will retort that he or she intended for it to be ambiguous. Or, even worse, they'll say, ah, don't worry, it will all be revealed at the end. If I don't know whether the narrator is male or female, that's a problem. And it's a big problem if in the final paragraph it turns out that actually the narrator is a polar bear. It's worth remembering that writing is a highly advanced and complex communication system. It's a complex technology and in historical terms it's a very recent development. Put it this way, our last common ancestor were chimpanzees, this wee guy here, lived about 7 million years ago. Imagine a timeline from then right up to the present day and we can see just how recent writing is. The earliest representative art we've discovered comes from about 40,000 years ago. For instance, this wee Venus statue found in a cave in Germany. Beautiful. What's happened since then? Well, from about 17,000 years ago, folk started telling stories through pictures. This cave painting discovered in France may depict something that happened during a hunt, or it may depict something else. Nobody's really very sure. Writing didn't begin until a mere 9,000 years ago, and it developed with Sumerian counting tokens. As civilizations grew more complex, people wanted to keep records of who had lent whom what. Rather than drawing endless pictures of sheep, they used a token with a cross in it to represent a sheep, and a triangular token to represent bread. I guess making the tokens must have been an awful chore, so when someone worked out that they could imprint the tokens into clay, it was probably like the ancient equivalent of the iPhone. I like that a lot of these early accounting tablets were to do with the production and distribution of beer. The Sumerians drank so much beer that they needed to evolve their beer symbol into something simpler. Well, that weird wedge-shaped writing existed in parallel with Egyptian hieroglyphics. They died out, but they may have influenced proto-synaptic script, which in turn may well have influenced the Phoenician alphabet. The Phoenicians wrote things down in sounds, and probably had the first alphabet proper. And although writing originated in independently in several different places, for instance in China and in the Americas, most modern alphabets derive from the Phoenicians. See, the Phoenicians were great sailors and great traders. They had this wonderful purple dye that they made from sea snails. And the Greeks loved that stuff. It was like candy to them. And not only did the Greeks buy the Phoenicians dye, they also inherited their alphabet. And of course, the Romans got their alphabet from the Greeks, and it's a Roman alphabet that we still use today. Now, I'm prepared to admit that an ancient clay accounting tablet is very different to the writing we're talking about now. So there's another story of evolution to consider. The first piece of writing that might deserve to be called literature is probably the instructions of Shurupak, which dates from circa 2,600 years before the Common Era. It contains such salient advice as do not answer back against your father, do not commit rape upon a man's daughter, the courtyard will learn of it, and this last one's especially sage, do not buy an ass that brays too much. Soon after that, some epic poems were written down, among the most famous of which are the Epic of Gilgamesh and Homer's Odyssey, but we don't see much in the way of prose fiction until we enter the common era, with books such as Metamorphoses. Well, after that, for a thousand years or so, everyone was too busy either building monasteries or burning monasteries to care too much about writing. And although there are some medieval precursors, most scholars agree that the novel is a distinctly modern phenomenon. Arguably, the first novel published in English 
is Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, published in 1719. Even after that, we still had to go through the epistolary phase, romanticism, realism, modernism, and postmodernism to get where we are today. What's coming next? Well, maybe that's up to you, but only if you remember how it all started. Communication. Writing, from counting tokens to postmodern novels, has always been about communicating information concisely and accurately. Writing may also be beautiful, as in the case of Egyptian hieroglyphics or the flowing prose of Vladimir Nabokov, but first and foremost, it's an amazing technology that allows us to communicate information across time and space. It's that amazing trick whereby an idea can be transmitted from one person's mind to another person's mind without those people ever having even met. Maybe without them even having lived in the same century. Transmitting ideas across time and space isn't easy. The message is often lost along the way. There's no point recording alone if you forget to write down which crop was lent and to whom. And similarly, there's no point writing a conversation if you don't make clear where the conversation's taking place and who's talking. Thanks for watching and good luck with your writing.